Juan Zarate is now here to talk to us uh, as a part of a new feature. He keeps our newsroom updated on the latest <laughs> national security news at all hours of the day, and now we're going to let you in on what that's like. So Juan, what's going on in the world? Well, lots going on. You heard a bit of it from Chip there, John. Uh, but certainly this week we saw the return of terrorism to the Russian heartland with the attacks on the Russian metro, continued attacks in uh, Dagestan, the, the Caucasus area of Russia. This has been heating up for the past year or so. And it's been a little bit under the radar screen, but now that you've had these attacks in the, in the metro uh, in Moscow, you see people focusing on this problem again. And you've got a claim of responsibility uh, by Doku Umarov, who is one of the Chechen militant leaders, uh, basically promising further attacks in the heartland. And so this presents a, a real threat, not only to the Russian people, but to the legacy of President Putin, who had basically staked uh, his claim on five years of relative calm since the, the period of heightened terrorism in 2004. How does it affect our relationship with, with the Russians, which is to say, in the past, when Putin has overreached, American presidents have tried to say, don't go too far, and he's responded by saying, we're just responding to our own version of 9-11. How does it change our relationship with them? Well, it actually provides an opportunity for cooperation because it's a point of both mutual sympathy and cooperation where you can say, look, we've got similar counterterrorism problems. Obviously, you don't want the Russians to overreach and commit human rights abuses, which they're accused of often in places like Chechnya or Ingushetia. Uh, but it's a, it's a point at which we can say, look, we can share information. We can look at the problem of Central Asia and Afghanistan as a holistic problem, and we've got to deal with these problems together. And so I think it's a point of opportunity, especially as uh, President Obama and, and uh, President Medvedev have come to terms on the arms treaty. And so now this is a moment where you can say, look, there's further things that we need to work on together, and Russia and the U.S. are partners. So I think it's an opportunity, actually. Okay. Now let's continue our tour of the globe here. What's next? Well, I think, uh, again, a bit under the radar screen, but uh, has been noticed by the press, there's a cyber war underway in China. Uh, you've got Google uh, going head-to-head, -head, a company, with uh, the Chinese state. Uh, Google, as many people know, based on news reports, uh, has uh, rerouted its servers and its, uh, and its online presence to the uncensored sites it has in Hong Kong. Uh, that's due to cyber hacking uh, and concerns that they've had for a long time with hacking and also censorship by the Chinese government. Uh, this has led to a very fierce reaction from the Chinese, trying to block some of that access to Hong Kong. And then you've also seen this week some uh, additional hacking of those who've been critical of the Chinese, uh, people in Vietnam, Vietnam Vietnamese users of Google, uh, journalists have been attacked and hacked. Uh, and so there's a low-grade cyber war underway that I think we need to watch very carefully. Two big and mysterious powers, China and Google. All right, so what's the next? <laughs> what's the next? Uh, well, the next, uh, I think, big issue uh, it appeared in the front page of the New York Times today. Uh, and it came out of the court, a federal court in San Francisco mm -hmm. yesterday, a ruling that, in essence, uh, held that the, the, the surveillance program from the National Security Agency, the NSA surveillance program, which was a warrantless program, at least according to the court, uh, was illegal. Uh, and that is a big case because it re represents two, two issues. One, it's a historical ruling of that program, a program mm -hmm. that did not rely on uh, the use of warrants to, to wiretap. Secondly, it was an attempt by the Obama administration to use uh, something called the state secrets privilege to try to block the case from coming to an actual ruling. Uh, so in some ways, they were defending the Bush administration by using this, this privilege. That didn't work. And so now you have a ruling on the books uh, that this program was illegal, at least as presented to the court. Uh, and the question now for the Obama administration is, do you uh, appeal that to a rather unsympathetic or likely unsympathetic Ninth Circuit? Right. So you have the pres this administration defending the Bush administration and using the State Secrets Act, which was a, a tactic used by the previous administration that some of the president's supporters didn't like at all. Um, let me ask you finally on the question of Iran. Give us a quick update on that. Well, interesting this week that you had uh, the French president in town, Sarkozy, talking about needing to, to get tough on Iran. Uh, France has had a tough line on Iran for some time now. They've been in talks with the Iranians for n a number of years. Uh, that then led President Obama to talk about needing to get a sanctions in place uh, in weeks, not months, mm -hmm. to pressure the Iranians. And at the same time, at the end of the week here, you had the Chinese uh, opening a crack here, saying they're willing to discuss the potential for sanctions. And so there's a little bit of momentum here for 
uh, an impetus for another uh, sanctions protocol uh, to pressure the Iranians. If the Chinese were on board, would it be real sanctions, or were they going to? I mean, are they really going to go for serious teeth, you know, bearing sanctions on the Iranians? Well, that's why I said it's it's a crack because yeah. the Chinese are, are savvy here. They they have commercial interests in Iran. Uh, they they want to play a bit of the diplomatic outlier here. They want to be a power broker. And so I would look to, to the Chinese to see some very strong measures put in place. I would also recall that we've got three sanctions in place already on the Iranians of varying uh, degrees of effectiveness. And so the devil's always in the details on these sanctions, and uh, that's part of this uh, diplomatic dance with the Chinese and the Russians. That's great. Wanzarati, thank you for that tour of our very quiet world. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank all of you for watching Washington Unplugged. I'm John Dickerson. Have a great day. Expand our imagination. Justification for being what you are.